record on this computer. Got it. Good to go. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So just share the link. Yeah. Okay. Uh, good evening, everyone. We are on top 30 of the journey that we started to understanding the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali with Sri Rajin Vakil. Uh, today, we'll be covering Sutra 36. Sutra 36 goes like Vishoka Va Jyotishmati. Vishoka Va Jyotishmati. The regular translation of this is or a pravritti that is sorrowless and filled with light. Tavariya ji translates this as by meditation upon light and upon radiance, knowledge of the spirit can be reached and thus peace can be achieved. In his rearranged Yoga Sutras, he takes this all the way towards the end, which is in book 5, part number 1. If you look at the three words in the Sutra, the first word is Vishoka, which means sorrowless. The second word is Va, which means or. And the third word is Jyotish Mati, which means having light or luminous. Thank you. Uh, now, from Sutra 30 in Book 1, um, we started the series on Ek Tattva Abhyas, right? And also, they were a part of something which we call Chitta Prasadam. And this is a continuation of that Ek Tattva, the Sutras upon Ek Tattva Abhyas, Vishokava Jyotishvati. Va meaning or all also. Now, here, this is in a longer connection, it is with the first sutra, that is sutra number 30, uh, that is Ek Tattva Abhyas, the what you call um, putting total attention on one practice. But then he has given a series of practices we saw from sutra 30 onwards. Vishayvativa, Pravrati Utpana, Manasa, Sthiti Nibandhani, where we say Vishay means to take any object of the senses and use that to bring steadiness of the mind. Now, uh, the Pravrati, right? Pravrati, which is uh, in, in the last sutra, now he's saying that Pravrati could be reversal of sorrow, Vishoka, or Jyotishmati, that is illumination, right? Or uh, what Mr. Taurya has put meditation upon, light. So now both these words are not nouns. Vishoka and Jyotishmati are both adjectives. Uh, somebody actually phoned me a few days ago and he said, can, can you just explain the Sanskrit a little more? So I would like to say again that I'm not good at Sanskrit. I have to ask somebody else. But uh, my son has helped me in the Sanskrit way. Yes, so I'll just try to explain it. That the word pravruti in the last sutra was is a feminine noun. Now these two adjectives over here, Vishoka and Jyotishpati. Vishoka is made out of shok. Shok is masculine. Vishoka is masculine. But Vishoka becomes feminine. So they have purposely made this feminine to tell us that you have to join this with the word feminine word Pravruti in the previous sutra. Similarly, the word Jyotish Mati comes from the word Jyotish Mat. And they have added E to make it from masculine to feminine. So again, they have made this feminine telling us that both these adjectives, they relate to the noun in the, the feminine noun in the previous sutra, which is 
pravruti. But it is not just pravruti, it is vishayvati pravruti. Means uh, pravruti which has an object of the senses. Right? So, uh, uh, go into that. Yeah. And by doing this practice, you stop the antaras. Now, again, we see over here that uh, Mr. Tawariya has taken this sutra into the fifth book. That is taken it right at the end where the sutras on illumination are. And uh, even though Patanjali is writing here or from 30 years at 31 or 32 or 33 or 34 or 35 or, or 36 or, 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 or this series goes on. Even though the word or va is over here, he has taken this right because uh, he has taken this by meditation upon light. In my personal journey of self-observation and self-remembering, I would like to say that I've taken this, even though I'm the disciple, I've taken this sutra from the other end uh, as a reversal of sorrow, the practice of reversal of sorrow. So I'm going to talk about that first, right? And then I'm going to talk about what Mr. Tawariya says, that meditation upon light, right? But uh, as a disciple, from a disciple's point of view, then I would not take this sutra from uh, the book one right up to book five. From my point of view, I would start our practices in book one only, uh, practice upon sorrow, right? In the feeling of sorrow. So shok, vishoka, the word vishoka, shok means sorrow, grief. Vishoka means freedom from sorrow in the sense that there was sorrow and now we have reversed that sorrow by some artificial means, by a practice or by uh, self-observation or some, we have done some practice to reverse that sorrow. So there was sorrow and now we are free of that sorrow, vishoka. Now we have another word which we can look at, ashoka. So ashoka means no sorrow. There was not any sorrow. So ashoka means no sorrow. Shoka means sorrow. Ashoka, no sorrow. And vishoka means there was sorrow, but there is no longer any sorrow. Uh, vigata uh, shoka, that is we have what do you call, freed ourselves by some artificial means from the sorrow. In normal practice, if you see that in normal life, uh, this is a what do you call, a part of the what uh, the healing process of the body brain system. And it happens mechanically also. In the sense that, uh, supposing somebody near me dies, so by crying, giving out sorrow, I get free from sorrow, right? So I cry and I give out sorrow, and by giving out sorrow, I'm free from sorrow. So uh, mechanically also this happens. Or when I go to sleep at night, uh, the first dreams which come at night are just balancing all the sorrows of the day. Right. So again, that is a visho, what you call balancing the sorrows. But of course, when you're using an artificial technique, when you're using a technique such as self-observation, non-identification with the sorrow, then you, you're going much deeper than just balancing it. You're coming to a state where you're looking at the sorrow from far away. You separate it from the sorrow. And one of the words of... Uh, one of the meanings of Vishoka, we can say standing apart from sorrow, looking at it from a little far away, the standing apart from sorrow. So, so it is describing the pravritti of the last sutra. Right? <coughs> now, Shoka, the Verb in shoka, the dhatu in shoka, comes from such. And later on we will go, go into such means the, the, where you see the government, they build all these bathrooms, they call shauchalai, the cleaning process, shauchalai, right? So it comes, so it is a reversal of sorrow, 
but the dhatu inside is the aim inside is such means purification not just reversal of sorrow but because of reversal of sorrow there is a process of purification such dhatu that it goes the pravruti that is the activity the pravruti from the last sutra by which we reverse sorrow and uh, we reverse it in a way by leaving something behind. And that something behind is our consciousness, our attention, right? And we understand that this is the play of life. And in the play of life, there is sorrow. And we don't allow ourselves to identify with sorrow. Now, what he is saying is Jyotish Mati. Mat means to possess. Jyotish means light. To possess light, to possess illumination. And we can take light in many forms. The light of understanding, illumination. Uh, the light of visualization or dreaming. The light which we see in our dreams. The light of attention, the light of consciousness. Right? So light will take many forms within us. But when the word Jyotish comes in, the word Jyotish, it is related some more towards the astral light. And Mr. Tauriya says the practice for this is the practice of the black flame. So Mr. Tauriya is given the practice of the black flame for this, for this visualization upon light, for this meditation upon light. So, math means to possess light and the chitta, because we saw in the first sutra, chitta prasadam, the chitta becomes illuminated, right? It is full of light, right? And uh, jyot comes from the root dyut to illuminate, to possess, to possess illumination, to possess understanding. With youth, we use the word electricity. So this is the light which frees us from all sorrows. Uh, this is the light which removes all affliction. But this light has many forms. There is a form with color where you see the light and there is a form without color which Mr. Tauria calls as the black flame. And that is non-material light. Now, I'm going to take this in the opposite way because that is something which. Really, sorry, first switch. Oh, don't touch that. Okay. Just leave that. Leave that. First switch. Yeah. Now, Jyotish Mati will also mean a practice which is free of regret. Right? So we are going to go into these different practices. And it is something which we can practice in our daily lives. Right? And like I said, because Jyotish is connected with the astral and uh, astrology and uh, there is a kind of inclination, uh, indication over here that it has something to do with the future. So, what I'm trying to bring tell you is that by practicing non-identification with grief, by practicing non-identification with sorrow, by practicing non-identification with regret, we come to an inner luminous state where He's saying that this will lead to freedom from antaraya, but where we get a kind of intuition of that some antaraya is coming much before it comes. And that is why the word Jyotish over here, that we can avoid the antaraya. I mean, the antaraya doesn't happen. The second thing is that by practicing this freedom from sorrow, we come to this inner luminous, spontaneous state where life flows. We don't have to really use our thinking instruments so much for life. Whether I should do this, whether I should do that. It flows automatically and we just 
sort of do the right thing very spontaneously and very gently. And that is the kind of illumination which comes from this freedom from sorrow, right? So uh, we have to ask ourselves before going into this, that are we willing to give up our suffering? Our suffering is the most precious thing which we are holding on to. Right? Whenever we, if you observe when we talk with other people, nine out of ten times we are talking about our sufferings. Right? Our negativities, our sufferings, our likes and don't likes. Right? Can somebody tell me what is the common thing in all our suffering? What is the common theme in all our suffering? It is all personal. Me. It is all related to me. I suffer. Somebody dies, definitely I suffer. Right? But it is all related to me. It is all related to the ego. And in the freedom from suffering... There is automatic dissolution of the ego. You don't have to work upon the ego because all suffering is related to I. And in that very practice of Vishoka, right, a reversing of suffering, right, there is freedom from the ego. We don't realize that our suffering is the most precious thing we hold on to. We love our suffering. Right? And if we were to say that you can talk about suffering, but talk about any suffering not related to I, then we have nothing to talk about. It's all over. It's a big gap in our life. Right? So now we are going to talk about work upon self, observing our suffering, separating from our suffering, and not allowing our attention to get identified or seduced by that suffering. Right? And this suffering is Vishay Vati Pravruti, Vishay of the Pravruti, Vishay, the object of the Pravruti. Huh? And then what is that Vishay Vati Pravruti? Vishoka, reversal of su suffering. So, two things will happen as we work upon suffering. What he said in the previous sutra, manasa sthiti nibandhini, the mind will be bound and the mind will crystallize into a, what do you call, one entity. What uh, Gurjev says, many eyes will become one eye and it will lead to what I told you, this inner lucid state to where we are flowing in life without any reasoning or anything. We just things are happening on their own and everything happens spontaneously. It's as if we are looking for a parking lot for our car and as we come into the crowded parking lot, another car will come out and we'll put our car inside, right? And that is, this is how life will flow because all karma is based on suffering. And the minute we have reversed suffering, suddenly the slate is clean. There is no karma, right? So this is, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to talk from the disciples' point of view, even though Mr. Tauriya, my guru, has talked from a very high point of view of this sutra. I'm going to talk about from, from the disciples' point of view. Now, in the freedom from suffering, there is a kind of inner illumination. Supposing I say I'm suffering from jealousy. But why is there jealousy? Because there is desire for something, there is jealousy. There is desire to possess something, there is jealousy. There is desire to possess a person, there is jealousy. But in that non-identification with jealousy, in that reversal of that suffering, suddenly I understand the mechanism of desire, the illumination of how desire works. And this is, as we work upon suffering, on one side there is freedom from suffering, the reversal of suffering. We suddenly realize that all suffering is nothing but the ego. 
It is all I, I, I suffer. And in that dissolution of the I, there is the illumination of the laws of life, the deeper laws of life. So the effort to give up suffering, the effort to sacrifice suffering, right, uh, is don't, it is an effort to be free from I, freedom from the ego. And I have a saying that uh, if we don't give up our suffering and don't, what do you call, uh, be reverse our suffering, then at the moment of death, Yama, the god of death, will say, hey, I'm not going to take your suffering. I'll take your money and everything. I won't take your suffering. You better carry it in a bag with you as you go. Uh, so he'll make you take it to the next life. So uh, better to start working upon this from today. So how much we suffer in anxiety, in annoyance, in envy, in jealousy, in self-pity, in melancholy, boredom, uh, in what we expect from life. All of us expect that tomorrow has to be good. And every time tomorrow cannot be good. So we suffer. Uh, what will happen in feeling undervalued, in feeling insulted, in feeling deprived, in not being justified, in not getting justice, in nursing grievances, in feeling insulted, and the list can go on and on and we suffer and suffer and there's so much to suffer about. Uh, this whole life is nothing but one big suffering machine and we keep on going round and round in that machine. Now, we can ask a question to ourselves, is all this suffering necessary or is it unnecessary? And we will find... 99% of our suffering is unnecessary. There is no real cause for any kind of suffering. Right? And we have to, is the only cause is avidya, the lack of consciousness. So first we must sacrifice our mechanical suffering. Now, we must sit and do some self-study what are our typical mechanical forms of suffering? So, as a married man, right, I live with my wife, right? Now, what is the suffering between man and woman? What is the suffering between man and woman? Right, so... Do I feel that my wife does not appreciate me enough? Do I feel that my wife does not uh, understand me enough? <coughs> do I feel that every time I want to do something, she puts me down? Right? So, I mean, this is common. Right? Now, this is the suffering between man and woman. And... Uh, Osho had a beautiful joke about this. Uh, he used to say that uh, there, there was this person, he asked him, why did you not get married? So he says, I never found the perfect woman. Right? So then uh, he says, but uh, you never found the perfect woman? Okay, I did find her once, but she was looking for the perfect man. Right? So... Uh, this is the story of our lives. We feel the others should understand us. And we don't understand that what, why should the other understand us? Right? Do we understand ourselves? Do we make an effort to understand ourselves? Right? Uh, the other person should treat us in a certain way. The other person. And when we understand Gurjev, we understand that two people don't meet, two machines meet. And a machine can only treat the other person in the way it is geared to be uh, treated or in the way it is programmed to treat. It cannot treat in another way. How can you expect the other person to change? But there is always this suffering between the man and woman. And we must realize this early in life. Then once we realize it, then we can make use of marriage to the... Marriage is the best ashram. No ashram can beat marriage. Yes. Uh, no mar ashram can beat marriage. So 
in every contradictory situation, if we can learn to complement, and we and if in a marriage we can come to a state where we can say that between the husband and wife, there is absolutely no disagreement on anything. Can we come, then real love can flow out of that. Then complementariness can flow out of that. So uh, we suffer. There's the suffering of man and woman. And we must work upon that. And marriage is, a, is the best opportunity to work upon that. Right? Uh, first of all, pause your reactions. Understand that the other is never at fault. The other is never at fault. It is always I am at fault. So never put the blame on the other. If we complain, we are always identified. If we are not identified, we do not complain. Right? We remember this and we start working in our marriage to rise to a higher state of consciousness and free ourselves from the suffering of man and woman. And if we can free ourselves from the suffering, then you will get inner illumination. And I tell you, sometimes that illumination will be such, you will look at yourself, am I a man or am I a woman? Suddenly you will see your manliness going away. Suddenly everything that is, you are no longer a man, you are no longer a woman, you have risen to something beyond. But if you can work upon this, work upon just your marriage, the relationship between man and woman. Sir, can I ask a question here? Yeah, yeah please do, please do. This for us. So uh, you said that we have to, uh, Mr. Biswas, we don't, we don't uh, uh, work upon physical suffering initially. Uh, there's enough of suffering without physical suffering. Right? Please go ahead. Sorry. So you said that we have to move away or not to identify with suffering. So, for example, uh, I see my children. Uh, in a not a good phase of life or something it's going on with them and I being mother uh, of course I relate to that suffering I feel the pain but I say okay it's their, it's their journey is it a good thought or it is again coming from ego I cannot do much in spite of giving them advices or ideas or anything so I don't want to relate myself to that suffering and I said okay hold on it's just because they are my children I'm feeling it more see our path is the path of more softness hmm. right so if by saying it is their destiny which can be very true also which can be very true right I become insensitive to it then I'm on the wrong path. But I understand it is their destiny. Hmm. I understand hmm. it is their destiny. And my sensitiveness also increases. Hmm. So the pain is there. But I'm not allowing myself to identify with the pain. Hmm. I'm not saying it is their destiny. So I, it, that is not a buffer to run away from the pain. Hmm. So it's a little fine line over fine here. Fine line. It's a very you know? fine line. Huh. Can you understand? It, right? Yes. Because a lot of our sadhus and all, they become dead to pain. Can, can you understand? They don't feel pain any longer. right? And they'll say, this is the game of life. But that is not the right way. Because consciousness and softness come go together. And if I rise in consciousness, I must feel the pain deeper than what I felt it before. Only but, I don't... If, but if I feel the pain, then I am again attaching myself to the suffering. No, I don't allow myself to suffer. Okay. Feeling of pain is one thing and allowing myself to suffer is another thing. Okay. Can you understand? Supposing there were riots in uh, Paris a few days ago. Mm -hmm. right? You feel the pain. Mm -hmm. Feel the pain, but as I say, and you can, cannot help feeling the pain of what is happening. But in the in your il inner illumination, you know that 
Everything is happening according to some higher law and that higher law is much more intelligent than my finding solutions to the pain. Can you understand it? So you don't allow yourself to suffer the pain. And here is a very fine line. Mm -hmm. If I say, oh, I don't feel anything. I've got above all this, mm -hmm. then I become dead. Mm -hmm. Can you see? Now, if your children, you're going to feel the pain. Mm -hmm. You're going to feel the pain. But there is an inner understanding that I can't do anything. Yes. I can't do anything. Right? Or in the most, I can put in some light in the situation, visualize some light in the situation, and that the higher intelligence will take care of it itself. Hmm. Can you get what I'm trying to say? I Many a times I I may call my father or call Sodi Bhai to help, help <laughs> them to... <laughs> To understand what the situation right. is, because you see from a different yeah, perspective. Light into the situation. Yeah. Light into you see them and you just visualize a little light. Yeah. And you know they're taken care of. Yes. Right. Got it. Sir? <laughs> Sir? Yes. Okay. What Hema J has said is a very real problem which we face as householders. Uh, we are uh, our attachment to our close people. We undergo their suffering, yes. and it's very much because of attachment. I sometimes see if my neighbor's uh, child goes through a problem, I am very sympathetic and empathetic. I'll try to help, but I don't feel the pain to the same extent as if it happens to my own child. Yes. Then I realize there is a. Uh, awareness with uh, detachment, awareness without detachment makes a big difference from being indifferent, which is a spiritually wrong, to having unconditional love. Yeah. And remember uh, what Krishna uses the two words in the Gita. Mm. Shrey and pray. So he is telling Arjun, all these people who have come to fight for Duryodhan, they have come to please him. This is prayer, to make him happy. Pray, priya, right? I will not do what is to, things to make you happy. I will do what is in your good, what is in your benefit. Mm -hmm. So when we think of our children and all, we have to think in these two terms. Do I want to make them happy or do I want to uh, do what is right for them? And right. sometimes, sometimes right for them is letting them suffer the pain. Can you get? You, you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes. Yes. You know, allowing them to go through the pain. Of course, you can explain to them what is pain and how to move through pain and how to separate mm -hmm. from pain and what all that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. But we don't teach them to run away from pain. Mm -hmm. And we are of no help if we get immersed in their experience. Madam, if we are sitting separately in, in meditation, we are in the most help. Mm. If you're sitting, even, even if you don't involve yourself, but you just sit in your bedroom and you sit silently and let your thoughts calm down and look at their situation with light, you are helping them much more than you can help mm -hmm. them in other situations. Wonderful, Wonderful sir. Wonderful. Right? You remember that many years ago, uh, one girl was raped in the country and the whole country was up in, in, in rape, yeah. right? And uh, they were all aggressively active. Now, rather than be, they were throwing out more and more violence. Uh, rape should not happen. They were throwing out aggressiveness. They were throwing out violence. Now, with all that violence on such a mass scale, people are throwing out and shouting and screaming at the government, and etc. Is there are more rapes going to happen or less rapes going to happen? You tell me. Can you can you understand what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. Now, it doesn't make a difference. Yeah, but if they sit silently in meditation in a garden or something. And let the thoughts mm. of, uh, you know, violence calm down and bring more peace in the world. Then it would have reduced the number of rapes automatically. Mm. You get? So, yeah. what is the right way to help someone? Right, right way to react to a situation. Though. 
First of all is not to react, not to react, is to pause the reaction, mm. bring in consciousness, mm. not allow yourself to get identified, right? Mm. And then look at the situation in a kind of whole way because we always look at situations in comparison and try to look at situations in a kind of wholeness with as less comparison as possible. And then in that, find a solution. And sometimes the solution is really not interfering in anything. Anything. Right? But still we try to help from the sidelines. It is God's universe. <laughs> so, uh, we have to see our typical forms of suffering. Where do we suffer? I remember many years ago, uh, one lady, she called me. She had just had a newly born child. And uh, the child was crying all the time so she said you please send some medicine to for him to stop crying so i sent some medicine after a few days she's phoning back now he stopped crying completely now you sent some medicine for him to cry so you know in life you, i'm not getting the right woman i'm unhappy now i've got the right woman i'm still unhappy right and that is the thing we have to see what our typical forms of suffering are Then comes the suffering of parent and child. And I'll, one day we'll go deep into what is the meaning of form. And the form of the father is repeated in the son. And that is the, uh, what do you call, meaning of the word putra. Where the form of the father is repeated in the son is the uh, right and so, uh, they, when we work upon form, we work upon our, what do you call, uh, uh, parentage or heritage or, or par uh, parenthood. Supposing somebody's, uh, recently, uh, one lady from Baroda, she, her young son died in an accident in uh, what do you call, in Kenya. He had gone there for some work to Kenya. And now, how can she help that, uh, what do you call, uh, son who has passed away? Is there any way to help that son who has passed away? Definitely by crying for him, I'm not going to help him in any way. But when that son met her, she was at a certain state of consciousness. Now, if she rises to another state of consciousness, when the connections, we have to see all these connections in a different light. Somebody's unmute. Somebody's unmute, I think. Right. Okay. Uh, Now, one of the meanings we took of Jyotishpati is no regret, illumination, no regret. And one of the sufferings in life is regret. If only, if only. And this if only, uh, for a spiritual student, there is nothing like if only. Huh? I may say if only I had not invested my money in the stock market, right? If only, right? Or if only I had married this other woman. Right? And <laughs> I don't know that famous uh, famous movie, Umrao Jan, where uh, these two young children are sold off in their uh, young age and one becomes a famous, what do you call, courtesan of uh, Lucknow and the other goes into family life and then they meet after so many years and she says, if only, you know, if only I had got married and not become a courtesan, right? And th that is a beautiful point in that movie, that if only. So, but in a spiritual person's life, there is no if only, right?
and we have that, to... yeah please yeah. go ahead. you said there is no if only in a spiritual life please tell me because that is Somebody is on mute. Jagpreet, you are on mute. No. No, Mr. Safi uh, is getting unmuted. Safi Bharanmal something. Please ensure that you are muted all, all yes, time. Is, Thank the, you. Safi is in the ashram and he's come here. Yeah. Huh. Okay. The, so, this, you said a regret that if only you are not allowed in the spiritual path. But that is exactly my problem. My biggest problem in my sadhana is when I sit down for meditation, I am torn by the fact that I have wasted some years of my life. I, I worked, I worked very sincerely. I see others who have started on their path much earlier. I was aware of everything. Why did I not start this, my kriyas and my meditation more intensity? It's a big commenting point for me. No, 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 no. Uh, because uh, what will happen? It that pattern will become so deep. Mm -hmm. uh, so and don't allow it to become deep. Right? Mm -hmm. Please understand one thing. On our path, enjoy life with meditation. Don't uh, what do you call? Uh, stop yourself from enjoying life. Mm -hmm. Right? Anytime, if only comes, at least I enjoyed life. Mm -hmm. Can you get what I'm trying to say? At least I enjoyed but all, life. But they all seem worthless now. Lots of things which I had said store by. Of yes. course, I lived a very comfortable life, got more than my sh anybody's share of blessings, everything. No, 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 no. But no. then I feel I was misled by the oh. by the dross of life. Yes, but uh, you uh, we cannot progress without thankfulness, mm -hmm. right? And if as long as there is, if only there is no thankfulness, what for whatever happened, we are thankful. Okay. Can you get it? Because that is a part of our growth, our education, mm -hmm. right? So. Uh, and, the, and the jealousy on the spiritual path is as intense as jealousy on the material path. Much worse. They use everything as a stepping stone. Hmm. If there is jealousy, hold the jealousy, sense the jealousy, look at the jealousy, understand it, don't run away from it. Except that I am feeling jealous, right? And mm -hmm. in that fire of jealousy, burn the jealousy. Allow yourself to feel the fire of jealousy and in that burn the jealousy. Mm -hmm. We cannot progress as long as there's jealousy. It is, it is an acid, continuous acid in the system. Mm -hmm. right? It will never allow the muscles to relax. Mm. Right? It will never allow us to come to a state of non-doing. Mm. Right? So please just go deep into the sensitivity of jealousy and in that deepness of sensitivity, free yourself from it. Yes. It is linked to the if only. It's both very closely linked to if only. If only. If only. It, life cannot be otherwise. Mm. Life cannot be otherwise. Right, and just uh, and make a make a what do you call habit of enjoying the small things. At least do something in the day which you enjoy, mm. which does not have any relationship to spirituality. Mm. See, even if you're making a salad in the afternoon, enjoy making the salad and then enjoy the taste and eating of the salad. Yes, yeah. huh? do something small which you enjoy every day. Right. Right. Don't make spirituality a baggage. It is not some big mm. thing you have to carry. Huh? Yes. It, it yes. is That's enjoying right. life more than enjoying life. That is spirituality. Yes. Right? Yes. Right? That's the point. That's the point. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So this if only can take many, many forms. 
if i had if only i had a better education if only i had got better opportunity if only i had met you earlier if only i had a daughter i've got only sons if only i had been a little taller if only i had not wasted my money if only the color of my skin was such <laughs> or if only my nose was a little longer or shorter if only somebody sympathized with me if only somebody appreciated me and many people in life they have these what do you call this you know, uh, some of the things, if you hear many talks of speakers today, that what is your plan B? They say, what was your plan A and what was your plan B? And many people come to you and say, in life, I had two plans, but I took this one. If I had taken the other one, I would have been more successful. A plan B would have been better than plan A. But this is all if only. This is all if only. And if only... can. And as long as there is if only, there can never be thankfulness for what is. And this is the state of a disciple is thankfulness. The thankfulness for what is. Another form of suffering is sense of failure. Many people, they feel they have failed in life. Right? And after a certain time, it does not allow them to make any effort in life. And there are people who say, why oh, I loved her so deeply, but she never looked at me. So now I'll never look at another woman again in my life. Right? And all these are just invitations to suffering. And the very common form of suffering, what other people think about me. So all this we have to look at. Okay, why do we suffer so much? Many For many people, it is how do other people treat me? Their happiness is only dependent upon how other people treat me. Yeah. What happened? Somebody asks a question, so I stop <laughs> reading the question. <laughs> and then many times suffering becomes a part of our, what do you call, get up in the sense that we love to talk to other people about our suffering. And it increases our ego because we have gone, passed through so much suffering in our lives. What is real suffering? What is real suffering? What is real suffering? What is real suffering? Why am I still suffering? Right? And uh, we must work upon this. <laughs> right. Hmm? Keta will take the question. Yeah, yeah. Keta will take the question. Okay. So please understand whenever we are in worry, whenever we are complaining, whenever we are justifying, whenever we are in dislike, whenever we are in negative emotions, we are always identified. Whenever we are aggressive, whenever we are finding fault, we are always identified. Right? And we have to rise above this identification. So we come to that saying of Christ, if thou hadst known how to suffer, thou would, have, thou would have been able not to suffer. So learn to suffer properly so that you are free from suffering. And this is the meaning of the first part of the sutra. Vishoka, va, uh, vishoka uh, the word Vishoka, reversal of suffering. Actually, because Tavarya Sahib has not taken this part only, he has straight away taken the uh, what do you call meditation upon light. But this formed a part of my practice for a number of years and it still forms a part of my practice. I, I don't allow myself to suffer. I feel pain, but I don't allow myself to suffer. Right? And sometimes there may be moments of identifying and then again you come out of it and again you realize what that you fell a little and you start moving ahead. Now, Whatever is happening in our inner world, 
I'm going to come back to you, Vatsala. Come back to you. Yeah. Whatever is happening in our inner world, it gets strengthened through suffering. Can you understand what I'm saying? Now, you're saying if only. Is if only a form of complaining? It is a form of complaining. Right? So in your inner world, you're complaining. And if you're suffering at the same time, the pattern of complaining is becoming stronger. Can you get what I'm trying to say? Right? Now, supposing I tell my daughter, you have got admission in a good university. Why don't you go? She says, no, I don't want to study anymore. Right? So I feel pain. Right? So I sit down, I go into a state of meditativeness and I sense the pain and I sense, hold the meditative state at the same time. Then that meditative state is becoming stronger. You're making the complaining straight stronger. So whenever we, we use suffering to make our inner state stronger. Can you get it? So suffering then becomes a very important part of our maturity, of our progress towards maturity, that I want to hold my thoughts, I want to calm the mind, I'm suffering now, and in that suffering state, I keep a calm mind, then that uh, practice of calm mind becomes much more powerful. Can you understand what I'm trying to say? So don't waste suffering. Use suffering in the right way. Use suffering in the right way. Like in worldly world, we say material world, turning a problem into an opportunity. Yes. That's one make, of, it, make it a stepping one, stone. You said something that has gone deep within my consciousness. Any prayer done during intense suffering, you carry the benefit. Yes. I went back and I realized that this suffering is a blessing. Yes. It's a blessing. Yes. But pray in gratitude. Don't pray in asking. Praying in gratitude. Don't, yes. make, don't make prayer uh, something no. about uh, going to somewhere no. with a begging bowl or something. No, 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 no. Uh, no make no. prayer that thankful for what we have. Yes, and for purification. Yeah, okay. Can I say something, please? Please, please. Yes. I don't. Uh, do uh, my name is Anjali, and this is the first time ever that I am attending your. Um, What's your name? Anjali. Anjali Sakharkar. I am from Nagpur. Okay. Yeah. Can you please the, uh, uh, switch on your uh, video so that I can pin you? Okay. Yeah. Just one. Yes. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Uh, good evening to all of us. Good evening. Um, actually, uh, I just got confused because. I have read, I've heard so many times that outer world is the mirror of what is inside. So, if you are suffering in your real life, isn't that a direct indication as something not correct or inside and something that you need to work on, on your inner self rather than, you know, um, rather than idolizing or what uh, can I say, you know, instead of saying that uh, pain is this, pain is that, you know, if uh, there will not be any suffering if your mirror inside is clean. Isn't that true for all of us? Because yes. I have experienced that. I am uh, I mean, honestly saying this because my life earlier was different. I was different. But after coming into this, all this and doing meditations regularly and reading good books and right now also I'm reading uh, Yoga Sutras by Patanjali itself coincidentally. So, um, you know, that that uh, that shows or, uh, you know, that helps me uh, rather in understanding what is what and what is why, the reason. And Slowly and slowly, the uh, you know um, over the years, uh, uh, as I noticed changes in me, I noticed 
changes in people around me in situations around me in the synchronicities that you were talking it's about exactly what we are talking about anjali yeah but then I don't know how you find some. It's exactly we are talking about practical situations in which we feel pain and how to rise above pain, not to identify with pain. So you found a situation where you are not identifying with pain. Right? Is that what you will call that? Because what I am trying to say is, um, this is what we are talking about. Is it? Yeah, this is what we are talking about. I don't know. I mean, maybe you are misunderstanding it, but uh, uh, this is what this is the normal situations in life and how to rise above them. What I am trying to say is um, the painful, full situations will not come to your way. True. They will uh, slowly, uh, you know, they'll reduce, reduce, and they uh, you will experience just happiness and bliss. And um, that this is what I am trying to say. Yoga is a twofold path, right? At a certain state, you experience your inner self, which is blissful, right? But that does not mean that on the outer circumference, everything is what you call blissful. Today, if my daughter refuses to. Uh, study for the exam, I'm going to feel pain. I cannot say, even you will feel pain, right? You cannot say, oh, I don't feel, I'm blissful. My daughter does not want to study in the exam. It's not like that. I understand that my inner state is of bliss. I will not identify with that pain. I will not suffer the pain, but definitely I'm sensitive to the pain, right? You cannot say you're feeling blissful over there, right? So there is a one level of life where there are opposites, and you live the art of living is to move through those opposites in the with the right intelligence and in the right way and there's another level where nothing changes where you go deeper and deeper into the inner joy and inner happiness and that is totally different but you cannot uh, say that this level also becomes that this level is where everything is changing every moment no sir i'm trying to say something else I don't know what you're trying to say. Even I have not understood. <laughs> you say you have understood, so I'm taking it that you have understood. And I'm happy you've understood. And just try to understand what we are trying to do over here. Right? Sure. Hmm? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, we'll go ahead. Now, I want to take uh, Taurya Saib's part of this sutra, uh, where he says that by meditation upon light and upon radiance, knowledge of the spirit can be reached and thus peace can be achieved. Now, I want to say, where do we get our feeling of I from? And this is a question all of us must ask. And does our feeling of I change all the time, right? So uh, somebody becomes president of the Rotary Club. Does this feeling of I change? Uh, I Today I get a lot of money. Does my feeling of I change? Does uh, by suddenly arrogance come into my, uh, what do you call repertoire of talking to people. So the feeling of I, where does it come from? So we will see that our feeling of I is always a part of memory. Our feeling of I is always a part of memory. Whenever I use the word I, I take in so many things that is right from my childhood to everything that I am. Now, is there a feeling of I which is separate from memory? And where and that feeling of I lies in the present moment? And where does that feeling of I come from? The feeling of I come from. So I want to talk a little bit about this. It's a little difficult 
but try to be with me. Now, light is the source. Radiance is the amount of reflection of that source. So we can easily say that what we experience is not light, we experience the radiation of light. That is, we experience the object which reflects the light. And again, we go back to that previous the Vishayavati, the object which reflects light. I think uh, Keta will explain a few things and then I'll come back to this point. I'll come back to this point. Keta, you want to pin yourself here? Uh, sure. So let's un try to understand the two concepts that Rajan Bhai mentioned. First is light. And second is radiance. And what he mentioned is that light, this is something that we are not directly able to see, but we are able to see light that is reflected and the reflected light creates that glow or radiance, which we're able to see. So let's try to understand these two concepts of light and radiance through a practical day-to-day -day example. I'll share something on the screen. On the left hand side, what you see is the, is the image of the sun as clicked from outer space. You can see that the sun is of course bright, that's the source of light, but everywhere around the sun, it is dark, it is black. The sun is still emitting light, right? The sun is still emitting light in all the, all 360 degrees in all the directions. But in spite of sun emitting light, we see darkness, we see black everywhere else. Now let's look at the image on the right. This is an image that we are used to, we are accustomed to whenever we see the sky on a bright day, this is what we see. Everywhere around that we see, that's not darkness or black, it is the blue sky, it is light. So why is this happening? Why are we not able to see light everywhere in, in space, but we are able to see light all around us on earth. Now, the reason for this is something that is called the scattering of light technically. For us to be able to see anything, something should come directly into our eyes. Uh, in the atmosphere, what happens is there is a lot of air molecules that are around in the atmosphere, the same air that we breathe, that air reflects the light of the sun and that is the light that enters our eye and we are able to see. So we don't see the light of the sun. We see the light that is reflected by the air. We see the reflection from a physical object. We see the reflection from a vision. In outer space, there is no gases there's not nothing as dense as the atmosphere that we have on earth i'm trying i I'll just interrupt one here i'm trying to come to a point where i'm trying to tell you there is only one vishay vati pravruti and that is reflection of light it to come in the way of light so there is an obstruction and then that leads to radiation and that leads to experience please go ahead Ketan. right Exactly. So there is, when we are talking about outer space, there is nothing in outer space that can reflect that light. There is no Vishayvati Pravriti. And because of that, even though light is all around, we just see darkness. So this is, this is the, uh, this is, this is the of the divine fragment and the vesture. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Now we can take we can, let's Actually, on this. Sundays, uh, the Delhi group is reading the purpose of birth and death from 4 to 5 in the afternoon. And I'm joining in that. And last week, we were talking about this. So, Keta will just explain that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, let's let's take the same analogy. Let's take the same analogy uh, for the divine fragment and the light of the divine fragment. Now, divine what, fragment... You draw it? I will also draw it. Yes. Yes. Huh? 
it's just coming up whiteboard is coming up yeah uh okay is the can everyone see the whiteboard yeah okay so there's a similar the similar concept of a light and a glow is also there in our divine fragment which is the spirit or the atma that we call now there is the there is the divine fragment this divine fragment tavariya sahib also calls as the black flame he calls this the black flame because like flame it is the source of light but it is black it cannot be seen it cannot be perceived by us because we cannot directly the inner perceive. atma the divine fragment right so you can take this inner atma like a diamond but this diamond is such that it you cannot see the light di directly you only see the light when it 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 comes out of some medium it needs some medium to reflect the light please go ahead yeah yes and they're not an ordinary diamond uh, maybe 50 coin rolls together something yeah uh, they the divine fragment yeah mm. yes yeah. and uh, like we saw we cannot see light directly we need something through which light passes, something which obstructs the flow of light. And so that here really... in the middle space is darkness, what he calls inky blackness, Taurya Sahib calls that. But it is light. It is not inky blackness. It is light. Now the light is going out. Can you show an arrow going out? Yes, I yeah. Yeah. And the divine fragment is in a in a polythene bag. This polythene bag is made out of the universal mind. He, Mr. Tauria calls this as vesture, vesture, right? Now, in the bathroom, that is on from this side of the, you'll have to show pointers, can you? Yeah. So from when you're looking from uh, the outside to inside, you see light coming outside. But inside there is no light, there is darkness, like he showed in the, the space, the what you call the photo of space. Is everybody able to understand what we are trying to say here? Right. So the glow of the divine fragment, the glow is on the outside. The glow is because of the vesture. The vesture has come in between the movement of light. The vesture has come in between the movement of light. And because of that, there is a glow outside on the outside. Like the atmosphere of the earth. Right. Like the atmosphere of the earth reflecting the light of the sun. Similarly, the vesture is taking in the light and the obstructing the light of the divine fragment and we feel this glow. This glow we call as consciousness. This glow we call as consciousness. Right? So if we take the word Sat Chit Anand, the divine fragment is Sat. But when the glow comes out of the vesture, it becomes Chitta. This glow we call as consciousness. Now this glow flows through body brain system and it comes out through the senses as attention. It is the same glow. The same glow. So in the divine fragment there is inky darkness but there is light but you cannot see that light. That light goes out. It hits the vesture and there is a glow on this side of the vesture. That glow is the glow of consciousness. Right? And, and we say okay, we 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 relate to that consciousness. So consciousness, the radiation is caused by obstruction to light. Now he's saying by meditating upon radiation and the light, we understand the divine fragment. This is what Mr. Tavaria is trying to say in this sutra. I hope I've been able to explain this in a this thing. Now we have to bring this down to the present moment. Right? So now Vishay Vati Pravruti, right? And what is saying Jyotish Bhati over here. Now try to understand this. There are only five Vishayas. For the eye, the Vishay is to see Roop. For the nose, Vishay is Gandha, smell. For the tongue, Vishay is taste. taste. For the skin, Vishay is touch. And for the ears, Vishay is sound. There are five Vishayas. Now, 
till now my feeling of I was coming out of memory. But if I can bypass memory, if I can cut off memory, then where do I get my feeling of I? Then I get my feeling of I, I taste, therefore I am. I, what do you call, feel, therefore I am. So what are these five vishayas? These five vishayas, what do you call, uh, these five vishayas are nothing but obstruction to light. That when there is movement of light, the obstruction to that light, that byproduct is these five vishayas of uh, rupa, gandha, uh, what do you call, swa, uh, uh, taste, sabda, sparsha, rupa, gandha, right? And so these five vishayas are nothing but obstructions to light. So initially I am because I have money in the bank, the false personality, or I am because I'm a father, personal, but now all that has gone away, the personality has gone away. He's saying now, meditation upon radiation. Each moment, what is the radiation? The smell, the five vishayas, the vishay wali pravruti, the five vishayas, right? By meditation upon them, I realize where they are coming from and they are coming from the movement of light and by meditation upon light, he says, you realize the divine fragment. So he's giving us something that we cannot see light. We What we see is obstruction to light. And when that obstruction to light comes, the first feeling as the glow comes out of the vesture is I am. So the feeling outside the vesture is I am. But the feeling inside the vesture is just pure inky darkness. It is sat, just amness, not I amness. Just pure amness inside. I don't know whether I've been able to explain this properly but uh, if there are any questions I'll try to take. So this is uh, uh, how we took it. So Vishokava Jyotish Bhati. So I have took it initially from my own personal point of view where I said by working upon freedom from suffering you come to a state of inner illumination. And what Mr. Tavarya is saying is you work upon the inner illumination because once you have experienced the light, there's no question of being sort of peace is achieved, what he says. So I just try to give it from both the angles. One was my personal angle, of course. Right? Any questions anyone has? Yeah. <laughs> we have some questions that are there on the chat. Uh, the first question is from Prashant in Bangalore. Prashant, maybe do you want to ask it yourself? Yes, yes. Rajesh uh, Bhai, a suffering related question. Right. Am I audible? Yeah, yeah. I'm audible. You're audible. You're audible. Am I audible or not? Yeah, yeah you're audible. Go ahead. जे आपने सफरिंग कहिए चे ये आपने बधाने पन थाई चे अने अर्जुन ने पन थाई लो तो जे गीता मा विशाद योग मा वो सारे रीते वरना वेलो चे तो आ सफरिंग नी लेवल ऑफ इंटेंसिटी अने आपना सफरिंग नी लेवल ऑफ इंटेंसिटी मा कोई फेर अने बीजो प्रश्न है के एक मा आपने ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन जाते करवानो चे तब मैं जरि� आपने यहाँ थी धीमे-धीमे इस एक अपॉर्चुनिटी तरीके ने यूज़ करी ने आपने यहाँ थी बाहर आवान हुए अन्य बीजा में एक गुरु तत्व नहीं भूमिका थे अर्जुन ना केस में तो इंटेंसिटी अन्य गुरु तत्व नहीं भूमिका विषय थोड़ों क जो तमारे लाइक तमारे तरफ थी मारे जानू तो क्या नहीं कोई भूम and sorry, just one thing. Can you please repeat the question in English? I'll repeat the question. He's trying to first talk about the intensity of suffering. Right? Sir, if it's in English, we'll also benefit the question and the answer. Pardon? If it's in English, we will all benefit. You know, no, I'm giving you the answer in English. I'm first giving you the question. Question in English, yes, sir. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So the question is first on intensity of suffering. Right. The first of all is mechanical intensity depends upon. Tell me, Prashant. 
uh, our own past experiences and uh, my degree of attachment. Yeah, attachment. Yes, degree memories. Attachment. Right. If so, uh, you know, Watsala was saying that if somebody else's child is suffering, then the intensity is so much. But my child is suffering. The intensity is so. Yes. So all mechanical suffering will depend upon degree of attachment. Attachments. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Now. Okay. Now, there may be, now somebody else's child is suffering. I have no attachment to that child. Right? Okay. Right. Can you get it? So, my degree of suffering may be very little. Right. 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 right? Get it? Right. But supposing I'm in a deep state of sensitivity. Right. Then even though it is not my child, I will suffer. Right. Absolutely. There is a... Can you Sant, uh, and yeah, yes, yes. You see, when Mother Teresa started her movement, it was a very beautiful movement in the beginning. Beginning, it was a beautiful movement, and it was so fresh. And at that time, Kushwan Singh had come out with a what do you call uh, interview in the. Uh, he used to publish a magazine called Illustrated Weekly of India or something of that. I forgot it. I don't remember exactly the names. Illustrated week. Right. And the first sentence which Mother said, if I see a child suffering, I feel Jesus is suffering. Hmm. Now, she's talking of that level of sensitivity. It is not her child. It is no. not her child. But she feels more for that child than if it would have been her child. So all intensity of mechanical suffering is through attachment. Attachment. Intensity of conscious suffering is through sensitivity. Sensitivity. Correct. 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 Okay. Can you understand? So there are two types of intensities. The intensity of mechanical suffering, right? My mm -hmm. son suffers, I will mechanically suffer. Yes. Yes. Right? Yes. But I feel for somebody else's child, that is only if I can touch a deep level of sensitivity. If I'm dead to that, then I will not feel. I say, uh, it's a part of the game of life. Everybody, everybody suffers. Can you get it? That, right. Right? right. So intensity of suffering is on two kinds. Is my intensity through attachment or is my intensity through sensitivity? Right. Right. Yeah. We are working from attachment to sensitivity. This is our, our path. Now, as we become deeper and deeper sensitive to life, we will suffer because there is suffering everywhere in life. Yes. Can you see? We will suffer. The absolute yes. crime. We are suffering. But that does not uh, mean we identify with that suffering. Correct. We don't identify with that suffering. Right? Sensitive to sensitivity is always we need to consider. Yeah, right. So my son suffers with sensitive <laughs> sensitivity. And I, and I understand somebody else's suffering is sens sensitive. Witty. Witty. Can you get what I'm trying to say? The whole idea is to work to a state where there is nothing personal left in suffering. And in that dissolving of the personal, right, there is freedom from the ego. Freedom from the ego. Correct. Okay. The Guru Tattva will play any role here? Like Guru Krishna Tattva and our... can show me the right path. Oh. Okay. okay. Krishna cannot catch Arjuna and make him walk on the path. He has to uh, he has to rise up in the chariot himself and say that okay, I'm ready to fight the battle of life. Right. Can you get it? Grace and help. And if our search is right, hmm. if our search is right then grace is always there to help us. Got it. Got it. It will always come at the right time to help us. Got it. Clear? Clear. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, there's a question from Sharmila Dyer. Yeah. Sharmila. 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 Yes, from South Africa. Very dear to me, Sharmila. It's very dear to me. Right. Sharmila, are you still here? Okay. She She's might not be. Hello. Pranam Hello. Hello, Sharmila. How are you? Pranam Gridev. How are you? Good, good. <laughs> Thank you for your amazing talk. Um, I think the question was already asked by the previous gentleman, the similar question that I've asked, and it's answered. 
So thank you for that. Right. May I ask at this point in time, an experience when one is suffering, mm. um, there is agitation in the body, emotions, and the thinking center. And it is so difficult at that point in time to hold that suffering um, because the three centers, you, you're aware that the three centers are like struggling. How does one, um, maybe you could give some advice with regard to that? You should be giving advice. Very difficult. You should be giving the advice. No, good. So, you have okay, you talk the thinking center, the feeling center, they're reflected in which center? The emotion. Yeah. In the emotional. The, no, the feeling is the emotion. The Sorry, in the instinct. The feeling center. they are reflected in which center? The instinctive center. No. Moving center yes. in your muscles. Yeah. Come on, you're the expert on muscles. Yeah, it is muscles. Yeah. Yeah. Next, the, they are reflected in the muscles. So now, supposing I'm feeling pain. Supposing it is pain through attachment. Right. Okay. I'm feeling pain. So I hold that pain and I start with relaxing the, the muscles. muscles. So there is sensitivity of pain and there's relaxation of the muscles at the same time. And this is a very deep thing. If the muscles relax, the thinking will relax. If the muscles relax, the feeling will also relax. Well, that is so difficult, Gurudev, really, hey? You're a physical therapist. You're the, uh, you're the master on relaxing the muscles. It's the hardest to practice. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you must practice the tense and relaxing every day. Always. Yeah. And do that for 20 seconds each hold. 20 seconds. Hold tight, tight, tight. Huh? So that when again there is pain, again you go tight, tight, tight and release at that time. Thank you so much. And once the muscles come in our favor, then it's very easy to control the thinking center and the feeling center both. Okay. But if we try to stop the thoughts and stop the feelings, the muscles will just become more and more tense. In that. Thank okay. you so much. All the best. All the best. Uh, there's a question from Arvindar. Arvindar, do you want to unmute yourself and ask the question, please? Arvindar? Can you please uh, switch on your okay. video? Yeah. Arvinder, Arvinder. Arvinder, yes. Arvinder. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's not there. Hmm. I'll ask the question. So, uh, didn't we as define didn't we as divine fragments agree to suffering when we step out of the Jana universe? Hmm? The question is, didn't we as divine fragments agree to suffering? When we stepped out of the Jana universe. Yeah, we agreed to variety and suffering is a part of variety. <laughs> when we stepped out of Jana, but we forgotten. We forgotten. We forgotten so many things. Stepped out. <laughs> the, variety. <laughs> the variety became too much. <laughs> right. <laughs> Shall we stop over here now? Any more questions? Uh, there is just one more question on chat from admin. I think it's saying, am I not the creator of my life? I learned to control my mind enough not to see any painful situation in the eye of the mind. There will be no suffering because whatever I see in my mind is manifested in my world. Yeah, I mean, if you can do that, then God bless you. All the best. <laughs> 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 Sir, may I make a suggestion, please? Go ahead. Go ahead. Sir, may I make a suggestion, yeah, please? Please, please, please do, please. Sir, you are you are doing such a world of good for so many of us. It will be great if, out of compassion and love, you hold two or three free wheeling sessions. Free what wheeling sessions. Session? Just free wheeling sessions. Free, free sessions. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. We will do free it. sessions on uh, because you are making scripture so relevant to our daily life. It is 
uh, not a pool of knowledge in our head. It is, uh, you are giving us tools to live our life. I mean, you have brought Patanjali's Yoga Sutras to daily, daily rules to live by in daily life, which is a wonderful thing. And uh, your uh, explanations are, I can see everybody is being helped. So it will be great if you decide to talk to us or for two, three sessions, just like that. Okay, we your experience, how actually, to deal with Actually, you know, these sessions, these sessions started. So many of us. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, is saying something. Uh, Mr. Uh, Gorji, he asked me uh, to talk on Taurya side. So we will one day keep one talk on Tavarya Sahib and how what was my life with him for six years. Right? Wonderful. I mean, wonderful. We'll do something like that. Okay. Wonderful, sir. Wonderful. Thank you. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night. Would you like to stay up? Sorry. Uh, prayer. The prayer. Imagine. Imagine you want to. Okay. Okay. Okay, sir. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunatu Sahaviryam Karavavahi Tejas Vina Vadhitamastu Ma 